All right, I've taken the uh, large horse piece apart. And the reason why is because I just cannot think of any way of making that piece affordable. And uh, it's, uh, it's just, you, you can price yourself right out of the market if you make things too expensive. And that one was going to be a very difficult piece to cast and a very difficult piece to uh, produce. And so I just decided to do a single horse from the grouping and I'll save the other horses for a future date. But uh, I like this horse. I love the uh, movement of it and stuff like that. And it can stand alone by itself. I just glued this uh, wooden dowel into the uh, new wood base that I've got to hold the piece. I've left enough room around the piece that it can be actually uh, molded easily. And so I'm going to get started on this and uh, see how far I get and see what, what comes of it. I think I'm going to put a rider on it and um, just got to figure out what I'm going to do. All right, I'll be right back. Time to play with some clay. All right, before I put the figure on, I've got to get the horse at least and anatomically ready to receive him and uh, so that's what I'm going to do first this uh, clay is being damaged over the last year or so moving around in my studio and stuff like that so I've had to uh, rework it a little bit I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a blanket on this uh, horse, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip some cloth in a melted clay and uh, do it that way because I think I'd like to have a particular look to the uh, the uh, blanket that's going on to this horse. Anyway, I'm just thinking out loud. and. Uh, I want this to be a dynamic piece. I'm thinking of having a full war bonnet with the full train of feathers coming down behind. I don't know. I'm just just thinking out loud. And uh, when it comes to the train of feathers and all that stuff, I've got to make that castable too. Now, I'm keeping the uh, surface of the clay rough because I want it roughed for the uh, type of patina that I'm going to put on this thing. And uh, a rough surface will lend itself to that type of patina. So that's the piece of, piece of cloth I'm going to use to uh, make the blanket. And uh, I've got my clay melting right now. Anyway, that's what I'm thinking. All right. Continue on.
Okay, I'm going to put this wet clay. Anytime you're dealing with melted clay, you have a great opportunity of burning the crap out of yourself. So I would not suggest anybody doing this that isn't at least 21 years of age. Now his legs are going to be coming down here like that. And so I'm going to form as best I can. That worked out just fine. I'll sculpt the clay a little bit when it gets cooled off a little bit. And it's a little wonky right now, but it'll be fine. I figured I'd better put that on now before I waste a lot of time with the uh, hind quarters of the horse. And I may just tear this whole thing off and do something else. I don't know. Right now, it's all up in the air. All right, that's going to have to do it for today. I just uh, spent a lot of time working on the... Uh, well trying to figure out what I'm going to do and how I was uh, looking at the uh, large clay and trying to decide whether I was going to continue with that or not. And then when I decided I wasn't going to, I uh, turned to this and uh, turning it into a one horse piece with a, a rider on it. Um... I'll pick this up tomorrow, but that's dependent on whether I'm going to Bit Livingston or not. Uh, I may have to go to Livingston to pick up a couple of clays, so it all depended on that. Yeah, that's even. Now, hi. Right. Catch you on the flip flop either tomorrow or the next day and uh have a great night if you like this video please like and subscribe to my channel it really would help me also check out the link below this video it will take you to a review of my nine instructional videos 
that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.